This is the Equid E-Commerce Show with your host, Jesse Ness, along with Richard Ote. Happy New Year, Rich. Happy New Year. Wow. That flew by, didn't it? It is. That was, that was a great year. Uh, it just, you know, you look back at the year... And it's it's not going to be like looking back at this year because this year you're going to be able to look back and then you're going to have 2020 business vision. 2020 vision. 2020 business vision. It's gonna you're gonna. I think you coined a phrase there. I I bet no one no one anywhere is going to use that. Probably we're probably <laughs> the only people going to be talking about looking back yeah. hindsight. Uh huh. Yeah. 2020 vision. 2020 hindsight. No, it's not 20. It's 2019 hindsight right now. But. Um, <laughs> Hopefully when you're having your 2020 hindsight about 2020 vision, you remember this podcast and you remember how many of these steps you took to make your 2020 great. Yeah, and you realize just how important, whether it's a beginning, an intermediate, or an advanced step, if it's something that moved your business forward, it's, it's a good thing. For sure. This is this is uh, motivation podcast time here. So I hope uh, you know this is this is the new year. You should be writing down your goals. This is resolution time. You're gonna probably be going to the gym in the next week, and it's gonna be overflowed <laughs> with uh, a bunch of people who haven't been there in six months. So until around February 9th or 10th. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the drop off <laughs> point for the for the newbies on uh, new fitness year, but. It's new fitness year for your business, too. So we want to help you start it off right. If you're uh, you're watching a bowl game right now or you're nursing a hangover from, uh, you know, from from New Year's Eve, this is time to, like, you know, get get some paper out, write down these goals. We want to help you out here. So, yeah, I mean, some of you, if you're really feeling go for it right now, then whip out the computer and just start doing it with us. Yeah, you, you can do this right you now. Can, you can pause a podcast. Oh, yeah. As long as you're uh, not driving. Yeah, you, you, could be, you could be watching on YouTube. You can be watching on the site. You pause it, do it, talk to support, whatever. So let's get pumped. Let's get some, let's get some things going here. So are we going to, you want to do, we, we talked about last couple podcasts, I can't remember which one, the kind of how to help people pick stuff to sell. Yep. So you want to go more into actually beginning medium and advanced level tactics on more marketing and connecting or what are you thinking? Yeah. I mean, selling online really comes down to marketing. Um, it's not all marketing. I'm a marketer, so I probably favor those, those things. But, um, the goal here today is to give you a couple tips. We're going to probably talk about 15, 20 tips that you can pick out three to five of these that take your business forward, right? Like, that should be a pretty easy goal. If you're listening to your car, you're thinking, or if you're at the gym, you're thinking like, I just have to do three, three things here, to take my business forward. All right. Can we are we in? Are we doing this? Yeah. All right. All right, cool. And and let's uh let's make a commitment now that we'll make this into a checklist. All right. Resolution time. All right. That means I gotta do the work here. <laughs> I'm gonna make a checklist. a checklist. All right. We're gonna put this on a checklist. It's gonna be on equi.com forward slash podcast and then find this, find this podcast, whatever the title of it's going to be. 2020 vision, probably keeping with the the cheesy 2020 vision. All right, all right. Well, let's see here. If we're gonna, if we begin with the beginners. All right. So yes, we're gonna start with some beginnings tips. Move along. That'll be a little bit harder. Um, But all right. So beginning tip. This is one that I always like. uh, I want to. I just want to call each of these merchants that I see and just be like, come on, just go buy buy a domain name. Mm. All right. So. You know, it's New Year. You might have to spend some money. A domain name for a year costs like ten bucks, twelve bucks, fifteen. You know, like oh, so you're talking for the people who took advantage of the very easy way to start a store real quick. And mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But it's like Equid three four seven five. Yeah. So when you when you start off with Equid, it's free, of course. So you know, like we don't buy a domain name for you. Uh, we you start off with like store one two three four five dot equid dot com, and at any point. You can buy a domain name, uh, richesawesomestore.com, and you know you swap out your store name, right? So it is really that simple. Um, I, I know we've had people that had questions about it, but w- without going through a full how-to, just know that 
go buy a domain name. There's hundreds of places to do it. Yeah. Talk to support. Say, hey, I want to connect this. So, eh, that's a little technical. So sometimes you just it's probably better to just talk to support on that. Um, and but if yeah. you haven't bought a domain name, it probably is not even going to be ten bucks because they'll they'll give you a deal on your first one if you've never bought it. <laughs> You're yeah. buy a buck ninety nine or ninety nine cents. And there's going to be a bunch of freebies. Don't get don't fall for their upsells. But go buy a domain name. Connect it to your store. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're serious about this store and you're listening to this podcast, uh, do it. It's 10 bucks, you know, yeah. just so. spend 10. Don't be like Jesse and I and start hoarding a bunch of domains. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't think get you're going to use next year. Yeah. Don't get into a <laughs> rabbit hole of buying a bunch of domains that, uh, you end up having to cancel a few years later. When, but anyway. All right. So they're in there. Easy. They got their domain. All right. They just set it up. What are, what are some of the things I know we were talking about a couple of areas in the store where. So yeah, this is. I think this is a layup for people. All right. So you've had this is particularly particularly for people who've had a store for a while that's been working, making some sales. They forget that we we have new releases. Like I don't know, every day, you know, once a week, there's a pretty new thing that that comes out. So if you've been with us for a while, if you go into the settings, there's a what's new section. There's a whole bunch of things in there that can make your store look better. So. We're constantly updating the instant site. We're updating the way the products are laid out. Um, and we've done it many times. And we mentioned this on other podcast, so we're, we're mentioning it again. If you, you can make your store look better instantly. By, you go there. There's some sliders. Um, the reason we don't roll it out automatically is some people have l- done some custom stuff, so we don't want to break anyone's store. But if you haven't done any crazy uh, customization, you can very safely turn these things on, take a look at what it looks like. It's going to make your store look more clean, crisp, modern, uh, which should lead to more sales, which is the goal here. Yeah, no, I love it. So got the store, you um, got the domain name now, you've looked at the look and feel, and, you know, someone's came to your store, and we're, we're talking about, you know, making content and or converting that content. That's what sales are, right? Sure. Right? So... So one of the things that we didn't really get into there that do affect the look and feel, but are very important, or excuse me, and are very important, are just knowing you can always improve your pictures, most likely, and the descriptions of your items. Yes. So simple, but so often missed. Yep. And we've had other podcasts where we say, you know, just get started. Take, pick up your phone and take a picture of the product. Yes, that's that's probably how you should start. But as the the bigger and you know the nicer you want your store to look, you do need some better pictures. So do you know this is an easy one to add to your list. At some point this year, I'm going to you know maybe you, you just want to up level a little bit. You know, you don't have to go to a professional studio, but maybe you want you know if you're selling apparel, you might want it, you know, an action shot, right? Lifestyle shot. If it's, um, you might want a white background. You might, I might, things might just look cleaner if you have an all white background. So I, I'm not going to say exactly what you need to do for your, your pictures. It depends on the product, but I guarantee you can do better. Mm-hmm. So, and it never stops. Yes. It never stops. I mean, and, and eventually, and I, I don't want to go too deep down, but, you know, one of the things you could do is, is, customers that have bought from you that send in pictures i mean those are testimonials some some i mean it's, it's a small testimonial but a customer holding something up of yours somewhere is basically like yeah and it's another picture right it's not necessarily going to go in the place we're describing right now but it could be not far below it for sure yeah you know. so picture fix your product images but also the descriptions so I know when you start off a store, you get a little lazy with the descriptions. You write one sentence, two sentences, because you're trying to move fast. Uh, So you move fast, you break things. Later on, you look at the descriptions, and you're like, why would anybody buy what what I'm trying to sell here? I'm not really describing it well. So uh, I'm guilty of this myself. I could look back at all my product descriptions and say, maybe I could make them all consistent. Maybe they should all have a similar... You know, oh, here's the look and feel, here's the size, here's the weight, um, and then be more descriptive. Or maybe you just need to add more content there. So it's, you know, 
it just kind of depends on where you're at, but I guarantee you can improve your descriptions. Just look at it, read it, read it, look at some competitors. What did they put in their descriptions? Um, you know, you can uh, copy is not the right word, but borrow some of their ideas and make your descriptions better. So pretty easy thing to do. It doesn't cost you any money. Photos don't really cost you any money either, and you know, unless you're getting into lights and uh, professionals and things like that. But um, easy tips right there for those ones. So, so let's see. We got domain. We got uh, new features in the store. Products and descriptions. I mean, if we're talking about it at its basic level, it's getting. Uh, you know, when you're selling things in a store, it's either getting a new customer, getting an old customer to come back, and or getting them to come back and spend more, maybe hopefully even inviting a friend, right? So if those are the three paths, one of the things that I think would be a great low hanging fruit for these people is just realizing how much time people are spending on social these days. And so connecting to Facebook and Instagram is a pretty easy connection in Equid. And since so many people are there, I think that would be a great new beginner step, too. Uh, I totally agree. So this is kind of if you started with your your site first and you're, you, you said, well, you know, this isn't social or, you know, one, you're probably wrong. You should connect it to Facebook and Instagram. It's are very easy sources of traffic. Or a lot of people come to Equid, they start with Instagram and Facebook. So, you know, this is a, a – there's always some improvements here, but I think it's important to – I guess this is more for people that haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. You should re really think about connecting your store to Facebook and Instagram. Here's what you get. So on the Facebook side, you're going to have like a store tab so that your store now lives on Facebook um, just like it lives on your domain. So that's kind of a nice thing there. You can start building your Facebook page. So, um, you know, and you think, oh, my people aren't on Facebook. Uh, they probably are, right? So, yes, and... Facebook is kind of tr tended to be older now. Instagram is now more younger. If you connect to Facebook, you have now connected to Facebook and Instagram. It's the, the combined largest social ne network by far. So you have the store on Facebook, but you also have the shoppable posts. So shoppable posts, talked about it in many podcasts, is when you're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram and you see the little, little shopping checkout bag uh, tag, I guess, right? Once you've connected your Equid store to Instagram, Facebook, you've now enabled this. So now people are scrolling through Instagram. It's, it, you know, it's becoming a giant shopping mall and you might as well have your storefront on that shopping mall. It's a pretty, pretty simple thing to do. So I'll still call it beginner level. Uh, Instagram has to approve you. So, you know, that, that sometimes is an issue. It takes a little bit of time. Um, so do it now because you'll be connected. And then you're going to be connected to, it's called the Facebook Business Manager account. Um, that's where you, you don't have to get, don't, don't worry about that. Does it sound, it doesn't, if that sounds complicated, don't worry about it. You just, you have this account now that um, gives you access to other things, um, advertising down the road, um, more tracking and analytics. You can learn more about your customers. Um, it's a free tool from Facebook. So, uh, don't be afraid of any of that, but this is a, a step. You, you want to take this early on just so you get this out of the way, so you get the approval by Instagram, and now you're, you can now sell your products on some of the largest social networks. And frankly, it's easier because there's a lot of traffic there, right? Like getting traffic from Google is a little, just takes a little more time, and you should be doing that too, but Facebook, Instagram is just, you know, we want you to get successful quickly, you know, start selling stuff and get excited about your business. And I think that for most people, that's going to be the easiest way to get going fast. And, um, you know, it's all mobile friendly. So you can just, if you can take, if you can post on your own Instagram or Facebook, you can do this. Yeah. No, I love that. That's a, that's a great, um, great insight there. It's just so simple for them. I can't remember exactly, but it was very few clicks. I mean, this is, other than the approval process, it was fast. Yeah. And Instagram, if you're listening, come on, let's make that a little faster. Here. <laughs> it's not us. And that's relative. That doesn't yeah. mean don't do it. That it's, If you're going to wait, you might as well start now. Yes. So 
one of the things you referenced there, though, that, that actually is really good, probably a final point for the basic beginners, is you spend all this time, effort, and energy to get people to come to your site, and then what are the what's the conversion rate? Somewhere between one and three percent, you know, varies from store to store in the beginning. Like, why not actually make a deeper connection with the customer that did come? Whether that's an email, reach out to them, or reach out to them on social again, or send them a postcard, or pick up the phone. I mean, I think if it goes back to those three sources again, getting a new customer, getting your customer to come back and getting them to refer somebody, it would just, I don't have hard facts in front of me, but I know it from just experience of life. The more you connect with a current customer and the more you engage with them and help them just enjoy the process of dealing with you and your product and the service that you provide for them, they'll, they'll stick around longer. Yep. And this is, uh, you know, Rich, usually you go into the woo woo side of things, but this is the, this is not, there's tactics that are underneath this, but this is uh, on the woo woo level, like, you know, be human to your customers, let them know that you're, this is a real person behind a real business and you appreciate them and, and, you know, find some way. Don't be, you know, I don't know. Can we say Amazon.com? Yeah. Don't be Amazon.com, right? Like, don't, <laughs> you know, like, um, don't be impersonal, I think is what I'm trying to say here. Um, you know, just because you're online and you found customers online doesn't mean you're not a real person and they're not real people. And then look at you. Look at you. Turn guys. it over a new leaf. It's this 2020. It's 2020. <laughs> We're talking about real humans, not just clicks and uh, conversion rates, but so now let's get tactical under that. <laughs> now we got that woo-woo now, stuff now, out now of the that way. they're feeling good, yeah. here's tactics to yeah. sell them more stuff. <laughs> exactly. All right, so here is the tactics. Um, you know, email is so easy and so overlooked. So, you know, if you already have an email newsletter, great. Send emails. Um, try not to just be sale, sale, sale. Um, you know, create stories, you know, have a story in your email. Yes, there's probably some coupons and discounts there that you're letting them know about. But uh, on the connecting, like, if you're ask for your customers to send you pictures of them using your product, right, and post them and say thanks to whoever that was. And, um, you know, that's just an example. Um, There's there's a ton of different ways. And you can connect via social as well, as we've already mentioned, or connect however However, you can just show that you're a real human. Um, you know, they don't, they don't. These don't have to be expensive. They usually are a little more time intensive, but uh, that's probably going to set you up for longer term success. It doesn't take a whole lot of. It, it takes a little bit of effort, not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things we we've talked about in the past, but I think it's a good place to do here when we're moving into our kind of mid level things that people can do. Um, hopefully, everybody always sets up. Google Analytics, but we think, especially when you're trying to find out who to connect with, having Google Analytics set up and telling you where people are coming from, where they were first, what pages they land on, I think that's a great, at least getting it set up, right? It's the first of the year. We're not in month five or whatever. Like There are other times we'll talk to them about things they can do specifically, but just you can't go back and get the data later. So definitely, I'd say mid-level here is get Google Analytics set up. Yeah, uh, and I agree. It's the it's kind of an easy step inside of Google, Google Analytics. Eh, it's a little more of a medium level, 201 level. Um, but yeah, you can't go back in time. There's no DeLorean here to say, man, I really wish I would have spent five minutes setting up this account to now track all the traffic and, and have... There's a ton of data there. Um, you know, we could almost do a full podcast on what you do with Google, Google Analytics. All right, write that down. We're going to do that. <laughs> we gonna, will. We will. We will do that because it, it is that could be good. Um, but it's no good for you if you don't connect it. And here's how you connect it. You go to, I believe it's analytics.google.com, or you could Google it too. Google Analytics. <laughs> it's pretty easy. All right. Don't let that stop you. You sign up for account, email, password. Um, I don't know what the steps are there, but 
at some level, you get what's called the UA number. You cut and paste the UA number, you put it into Equid, it's connected, right? So, and, and that, those steps can change because Google changes all the time, but it's really that easy. You set up an account, you get a UA number, you cut and paste the UA number, put it into Equid, you're connected. And now you can just, that, that step is done, check mark. In six months, you're going to come back and you'll be like, man, thank you, Jesse and Rich, for mm -hmm. telling me to set up Google Analytics. Now I have six months of data. Mm -hmm. So, And now you get to work doing more of the stuff we talked about and some of the beginners, but a little more advanced. Yes. And you know what? If you're a beginner and you skip this, I totally get it. Uh, understand. Now go back and now go back and do it, right? Mm -hmm. get, get your big boy pants on and uh, set up Google Analytics. And big girl. And big girl pants. <laughs> that sounds worse than big boy pants. I don't know why. It's not... It's just the way it is, Rich. Uh, All right. So now... <laughs> so. Everyone's hooked up. They're hooked up to their Facebook, their Instagram. They got Google Analytics set up. People you're getting, are coming it, you're to the getting store. it going. And now you realize that, wow, it's called social. Like, I got to actually put stuff out there. So making, you know, blog posts or videos or stories or some sort of funny video about your product, I think, Actually, making content on social is um, probably a good step here. Yeah, and, and so this is uh, it's it's always frustrating when we see people like, "Hey, I didn't get any sales." All right, well, what'd you do? I don't know. I just signed up for the account and I didn't get any sales. Well, yeah, of course you didn't get any sales, right? Like, how do you think everybody else gets sales? They make content and put it put it everywhere. But we're gonna focus. We we we'll focus on social content. So. And we mentioned before, you already connected your store to Facebook and Instagram, right? So you're already set up. Now use those social networks like you would normally, right? So if you go on vacation, you take a picture in front of whatever landmark is and you say, wow, look at me, blah, blah, hashtag, whatever. And people like it and they say, wow, that's awesome. You know, uh, and rinse, repeat, like you, you do the same exact thing for Instagram, Facebook, Here's a picture of my lunch. Great. Here's a picture. Here's a video of a baby, you know, whatever. I, I'm, I'm trying to use boring or just average things because I know you listening, you can do that. So why can't you do that for your business? Here's a video of me making my product. Here's a picture, a video of me putting in a box and putting a note for my customer or, you know, um, here's a note that a customer sent me that was really awesome and I wanted to share it with you. And, you know, that's not a buy now. That's just, hey, I'm a business. I'm putting stuff out on social. It's going to take a little bit of time. You're not going to, you know, uh, every post is not just going to get a bunch of likes and sales and comments and, and such, but you have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, well, I think part of it too is just to come back and, think of the sales process in general and it starts with awareness. If they don't know about you at all, they're not going to buy anything from you. And then, and it moves into consideration. They're thinking about it and then they make a decision. And so it, it, it's basically those three steps. And so sometimes you're making content that's just about the product. It, you know, this is what it does. Sometimes um, say you're the example you use where you're writing a note, you're, here's how the product works. And you're writing a note to a customer. Maybe that would be that they're aware of you now they've been on the product page and then now they're seeing this one. They're like, Oh wow. Not only am I, do I like this product, but this person seems pretty cool. Like he just showed me how to use the product. He showed me how they packed the product and he showed me putting it in this cool note to one of his customers. Now, hopefully you do that to all the customers once yeah. they've seen that. But the, you I don't know. do that, by the way. <laughs> it was a good tip. I don't do it. But you should. But, you know, maybe you'll start. Yeah. But the, the point is everyone's at different spots in the buying process, too. So to mix up and shake up your content, it's not always just going straight for the sale. I mean, look at, look at what some of the big brands do. At the, the few times you watch TV these days, you're still seeing them more do big brand awareness type ads because in the end um, I think that's what's 
becoming very clear is who you are and how people feel about you are going to be way more important because if it was just the cheapest, fastest, we all know the place where everyone goes for that. So you got to be the things that the big stores can't be, which is personable and real and showing your product in ways that they're probably not going to take the time to do that. So I, th I think that's a, that's a really good one. What I, I'm, I'm going to add something to that. Rich. Sure. So we, we talked about social content and it, you know, can be pictures, notes, uh, videos, but I want to really double down on the videos part and be very specific on stories with a capital S. So stories, if you don't know, just, I don't know, maybe you don't know, but stories is, is the little short little videos in Instagram and Facebook. And that's where all the available inventory is. By inventory, I mean ad inventory. So I don't want to nerd out on advertising, but... It's all right. We're almost to the advanced stuff. Okay. We're getting to the advanced stuff. So if you're going to, yes, take all of our mes messages about pictures and everything, those are a little bit easier. I get it. Uh, you know, I'm... I don't want to put in the hard work some days either, but pick up your phone, hold it vertical video, which I, I don't like vertical video either, but that's, that's the format for stories, and you record 15 second, 30 second, 45 second videos, which are capital S stories, and Facebook and Instagram love stories. So just... I just mean, you name it across the board. Even the new stuff, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube's even yeah. doing it. Pinterest is starting to do stories. Yes, so it's all it's all about stories, short little video snippets. Um, so anyway, that's more of the yes, do social content. But the hot tip, the current tip, is do stories. Later on, those can get boosted, and there's advertising options there, etc. But first, just get in the habit of making them because you'll you know your first probably few won't be that great. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to get better. So make social content, but the the like asterisk there or the I don't know <laughs> the highlighted part is stories. So anyway. What do you what do you think a good kind of low hanging fruit would be in next as far as like avenues that are out there that they can just take their existing store they have and maybe get more traffic. Is there anything you can think of for that? Yeah. So this is a little bit of the opposite of making social content, because that's hard work, you know? The next one is Google Shopping. This one is the easiest set it and forget it. We call it medium because, you, you know, this isn't maybe the first thing you do from day one, because uh, you do have to spend money for this. So, But Google Shopping is when you Google stuff and you see the products on, with the pictures on the top with the prices that's basically Google Shopping. Those are paid ads. So there, there is some steps there. You need to send Google a feed. Um, you know, you're, you're paying for this, so just heads up if you wanted it free. This isn't the free part. Um, but it's based on the keywords in your titles, the keywords in your descriptions, which if you listened earlier, you've already been improving those. Uh, and then when people type in the product that they're looking for and you happen to have, Google surfaces those um, ads up top. So Google Shopping, you can set it up yourself. Uh, we have feeds available from Equid. You can set it up um, in, in Google. You set up a Merchant Center account, a Google Ads account. We also have automated ways to do it. If, you, if those other things sounded foreign to you, just do the automated way. Um, and it's, it's optimized, and it, it's actually very, very slick. So if you're like... Um, if you don't want to make videos and do do that, just create content, do Google Shopping, right? Mm -hmm. Like, because that is a, that's more the easy make money 24-7 um, concept of e-commerce. So mm -hmm. I love it because you can set these things up and they just go for, they'll go for years and, and make you some money. Um, you know, you're paying for the ads. So like you do need to think about profit margin and all sorts of stuff. But um, if you haven't done it before, you haven't tried it, Try Google Shopping. Uh, it's it, probably the easiest way to get traffic and sales, in my opinion. Yeah, and one of the things I know we wanted to cover too, and I'm going to almost go back to the social stuff, is how can you take some of the social traffic 
drive it back to your site, and then almost re-engage in another way where it's still that same traffic, but it doesn't really feel the same. And uh, I know one of the things we wanted to cover was like Facebook Messenger and specifically sometimes even using that as a live chat widget. We they're, they're, You can do it separately, have a different live chat, but just in general, Messenger and live chat. Again, you have someone on their site, on your site, and hopefully they're looking to buy something. Like that is a phenomenal time to, to speak with them. For sure. So yes, you've paid money, you've you've done the work, they they've gotten to your site. Maybe your description you didn't really you didn't do that great of a job. You didn't you didn't describe the the feel of it. And they're or like, hey, if I buy if I buy this now, am I gonna get it by next Tuesday? Right. So um Yes, you want them to just look at your site and read every page that you painstakingly created, but they just want the answer right now. And the you've probably seen them on many different websites. It's a little pop-up on the usually the lower right-hand side. It's got a little messenger symbol, a little blue kind of lightning bolt thing. Mm-hmm. You click on that. They can now chat from their messenger app to your messenger app. So now the good thing is um, if you're on the go, you know, like you have a notification, a buzz in your pocket. Somebody's asking you a question. You can immediately answer them and get a sale right there. Like mm-hmm. it's a, you know, like why wouldn't you do that, right? Like, you yeah, know. I mean, there's been, we've seen various results, you know, different people in e-commerce over the years we've been doing it. But, man, there's some phenomenal results with that. Now, we won't go into the detail of bots and stuff because sometimes it's, yeah, there's, a, there's advanced get, level. Yeah, we're the, just talking. We're just talking. Someone asked you a question, and you are going to answer that question manually yourself. But it, it brings up something we've talked about a bunch, Jesse, is you still have to do things. <laughs> right? You know, I mean, it's, it sounds like in the, you know, we go back in the very beginning of e-commerce, and I just remember so many people like, yeah, I want to get into it because I don't want to have to talk to people. I don't want to have to... Well, it's like, well, there's, like, let's think this out. We used to be mesmerized by a TV that everyone would watch on the table in their living room. And then we were mesmerized by computer screens, and then we were mesmerized, mesmerized by our folding laptops. Now we have computers in our pockets, and some people have multiple. And there's not just one screen on that. There's multiple screens. You have all the social apps and all these other, but really... It's just um, these people are all hanging out in different parts. I mean, if you re- it's, it's almost kind of sad if you think about it. Like these gigantic companies, they're really just a, a glorified app. I mean, Facebook is just an app that a bunch of people hang out in. Instagram is just an app, a bunch of people, TikTok, Instagram, all this stuff. So... You have all these people. You've done you've done the videos, like we've said. You've you've done uh, stories. You set up all this stuff, and now someone's sitting on your site, and they're asking you a question. And if you're not taking advantage of that, and not only are you not taking advantage of it, but you're you might not be realizing that this is a whole nother plat a whole nother channel for you to communicate in them with too. Right. So now it's not just the email. They're not just seeing you. And and I'm it wasn't to be disheartening. It's more to say the more places they see you, they see you in an email, they see you on Facebook, they see you on Instagram, they went to your website, you talk to them on Messenger, you're just getting closer and closer to the sale every time that's happening. And if the sale did happen, this is just a better way to keep them as a customer. So just we highly recommend using um, Facebook Messenger and, and or live chat, preferably yeah. in one. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's a you know one or two click integration. Um, you don't need to. There's no code involved. You just connect your store to Facebook me- Messenger, and that little little pop up thing will pop up. And um, yeah, there is work. You know, I, I've answered a lot of chats, and sometimes I get super annoyed by the questions because. You know, they're like, well, just put the, how much is shipping to blah, blah, blah. 
All right. Okay. You just put it in the cart and check it out for yourself, you know. But that's a sale just hanging there. Yeah. Right? Like, so I can either complain about the fact that this person should should know better and should do this, or I can just say, I can just answer the question and yeah. get a sale. So what do you want to do? You want to complain about this idiot on the other side, or you just want to get a sale? Right. So, so yeah. here's, I know the next one that we wanted to cover too is one of your favorite um, I remember the first time you implemented this, you're like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. <laughs> so you've, again, you've done all the hard work, you got them on the site and they didn't buy anything and they're about to leave. What's your favorite? Well, there's a couple options there, but, uh, partic- I, I also, by the way, all this hard work talk, I like to make money while I sleep. So you know, I like the automated ways. So when people put stuff, they okay, forget about the Facebook Messenger thing. They put stuff in the cart to check out the shipping price. Maybe they thought it was a little too high or they thought, um, you know, or the phone rang and they, they forgot what they were doing. Whatever reason, they didn't buy at that moment. Once they've put stuff in the cart, which usually includes an email, you can now set up an automated email series. So... I'm sure you've gotten these emails from other people, other companies, right? So this is a set it and forget it uh, functionality. So you, as soon as somebody puts it in there, it's called an abandoned cart uh, recapture. There's a couple different, people use different terms for it. But basically it's somebody's put something in the shopping cart to check out. They didn't complete the checkout and now they can get a series of emails. Maybe you just do one email. Um, yeah, I think usually the, the standard is kind of a three email series with, uh, hey, looks like you forgot something, blah, blah, check it out. Or three days later, maybe you amp it up and give a little bigger discount. And then day five, you, you kind of throw out your, your best, best shot at it. And, you know, these things just work, right? Like they're, yeah, you're kind of adding to the email, (laughs) email spam, but this is, this is what people do. And I can tell you from personal experience, it totally works. So I would do that. It's built into Equid. Um, there's other programs you can use, other email newsletter programs, but um, they all work about the same way. So anyway, I'll kind of get off my soapbox because, yeah, this is an easy set it and forget it thing that you should do. So if, we, if we're if we moving into the advanced stuff and we figured, all right, people have done this now. They've been producing <laughs> content. They, uh, they have all their stores connected to Facebook, Instagram. They got their Google shopping set up. They got analytics. Um, you're making money at this point. Yeah, now, you're, right? you're making money and you got lots of traffic. What are what are some of the, I, I, they, let's just go into some of the automated. They could be automated or maybe it's just helpful when it comes to ads. Like what, what would you? Yeah, so this one is, we've talked about it plenty on the podcast. Um, I'm going to call it a little more advanced level, but it's, it's, it's more traffic level, is Facebook dynamic remarketing ads. So uh, this is, and we, when I say Facebook, I mean Facebook and Instagram. So this is the, somebody is in your, they're on your, on your store, they visited a product, they didn't check out, right? they never went into the cart, so they're not getting those automated emails that we just talked about. They just saw the product. Um, with, if you've connected with Facebook, you can, they can now show that product wherever they go on Facebook and Instagram. I guarantee you've seen these ads all over the place. Um, but, you now have a signal that somebody's been on your product page. They were probably interested. So we're going to keep showing them this ad, um, you know, for a certain amount of time until, until they, they purchase. Um, so it's called Facebook Dynamic Remarketing. Very easy to set up. You can do it on your own. That, that is a little harder to do on your own. We also have some connections with uh, third parties that will basically make this the same, same very easy, simple way that you expect from Equid. So like I say, this is actually fairly easy to do, but it does require a certain amount of traffic per month. So I think you need about 60 visitors on a product per month. So that's usually you don't get that in your, you know, your first few months, right? So um, anyway, highly recommend it. Again, this is kind of a set it and forget it. I've seen plenty of Facebook accounts. I know that this works. So, uh, I mean, there's, Gosh, so many things we could go down, down the advanced route. And I know this is the beginning of the year. 
So I really just want to stick to high level advanced because I know a lot of these advanced things we could do three, four, five, six, you know, years worth of podcast on each one of the things alone. And we probably have. And we probably, to some yeah. degree, we've covered some. Go back and look at the back catalog, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but what what do you think when it comes to like, you have your own Equid store, you've been doing this for a while. What do you think about marketplaces or Amazon? or? Yeah, so I, I, I've made a bad comment about on Amazon before. Jeff Bezos, I'm sorry. Just don't <laughs> don't come looking for me. But Amazon is, uh, they're, they're a beast, but they can also be a huge, huge source of traffic. So, um, yes, you don't want to be impersonal. You want to have your own personal brand. But don't kid yourself. Amazon is massive. And if you're ready, it's, it's, a, it's a step you probably should, should look at. Um, Especially I mean, if yeah. you have your branding down. Because people, as you know, I'm probably preaching in the choir to all of you listening right now. When people are going to Amazon... They're usually going to buy or to look at the reviews of something specific that they want to buy. You don't really go to Amazon and just kind of meander around. and. It's not a social try. network. Yeah, it's not a social network. You're not there to dis- discover. I don't know how I said that word. <laughs> You're not there to discover products. You usually know exactly what you want. Um, and so... If you did a lot of these beginner and mid-level things already, like build your brand, build your following, build these people, you may as well be selling on Amazon as well. Yeah. Right? I, and I didn't say that to say the same word as much as it's like a play on words. You should be doing both. Yes. Totally agree. Now, we put it in the van section because you kind of have to be on your game. Your, pro- your pictures have to be really, really good for Amazon um, because people are going through this really fast. Your customer service has to be really good because the reviews are everything in Amazon. Uh, you need to have inventory probably at Amazon so they get it fast so you have the prime designation. So there's a... Um, you just kind of have to be ready for Amazon. I don't know. I'm putting ready kind of in quotes because mm-hmm. um, you might you might think you're ready off right off the bat. And if you sell products that are on the lower scale, lower lower price point, you might want to go there earlier. So kind of depends where you're at. But don't, you know, <laughs> Amazon is like, uh, I don't know, like uh, swimming with sharks, right? Like it can be your friend, but it can be a little bit dangerous. Um, but there are a ton of sales to be had. You know, some people are on a 10 to 1 Amazon to their e-commerce. Some people are, you know, 25% of their sales come from Amazon. Um, Just kind of depends on where you're at. But when you're ready, advanced level, check out Amazon. We have whole podcasts on it. Um, We have opinions on it. Um, But, you know, get your your game ready and uh, then start tackling Amazon. We have a sync with it. It's going to be pretty easy to, it's going to be easy to sync your products to Amazon and be ready to roll. So one of the things we wanted to cover too is a little is probably the most boring, but we've seen upticks enough that it makes it's it makes it worth discussing. Yeah, and you know this is specifically just the world of alternative payments. You've done everything right, and just someone wants to pay a different way than you have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so. You probably yeah you probably signed up PayPal Square Stripe you know some some of the more common payment providers and then we actually just well, this might be breaking news to the podcast world but we have an integration with Afterpay so Afterpay uh, once you have this integration you can do like I believe four it's like four installment payments so really helpful for if you're going after a younger market or if you have a higher price point um, some people just like. They're just like, no, I won't, I'm not going to pay up front. I'm only paying after pay, right? So it's an easy thing to add on to your store. Um, check it out. It's very, very popular in Australia. Um, so for the Aussies listening, we have it. It's there. I bre- bre- Brazil, too. Brazil, yeah. They have, I don't know if they have after pay, but they, they almost always pay in installments. Yeah, oh, for sure. They're yeah. all about installments. Oh, yeah. so I'd, I'd check that out. But yeah, but yeah I mean, just... We also, and by the way, to go on to that, we also have PayPal credit 
It's always been there. PayPal credit is about the same thing. So for people already on PayPal, or if you're on another another platform and you want to add PayPal, check that out. Mm-hmm. Do people still send checks? Boy, <laughs> I don't know. I I think I I get one or two a year, but it's it really goes down. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's you can just... actually get. Speaking of alternative payments, right? If if you're in a country that you know cash on demand is is the the standard, we have that. If you want to accept checks, we have that capability. Um, actually, I see this a lot from uh, you know when people downgrade, they say, "Oh, you didn't have you know such and such payment." Well, yeah, we did. You know, like if, if um, obviously we're in the U.S., so we kind of talk about Stripe, PayPal, Square a lot, uh, and that usually is is fine in the um, you know a lot of the English speaking wor- world. But we have like fifty to sixty different payment providers, and you know, just check right. Like, so I saw somebody the other day saying, "Oh, you don't have uh, Ideal." Yeah, we got that. Mm-hmm. You know, like we have we have payment providers in every single country. Um, if we have some very, if you have a very particular need, you know we can we can build it too. So, um, so do check. But yeah, if you're ready for it, um, you might want to consider adding an alternate payment provider um, in addition to your regular payment provider. Yeah, it's kind of a boring one, Rich. But you know, <laughs> this is like, hey, you're you're already you're already kind of you're already kind of rocking. You're making some sales, and then you find out like, oh, you mean if I just add this one payment provider? I could get like an extra 20% of sales. Would you do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not? Uh, so, so anyway, check it out. A little more advanced level. Yeah. So the next thing we wanted to talk about when it came to advanced is, let's just say, for lack of a way to sum it up quick, is almost juicing. How do you juice up the content you've made earlier? It, some of these will be different, but... <laughs> yeah, I think this is um so I'm I do digital marketing for a living. So this one is more in my wheelhouse. We've had whole podcasts about this. We've talked about it with Matt and Joe. Um so look back on those ones. But it's about it's about Facebook and Instagram ads. So this is and this is about doing it yourself. So we talked about a Facebook dynamic ads. That's kind of a uh, a set it and forget it system. You don't really need to, to advertise these. Facebook, Instagram ads is you can actually take your the social ads that you've you, when you listened in the early section, you've made a bunch of posts, you've made all the stories, and now you want to start boosting those. So you want to boost them. Um, and this is where you're in that Facebook business manager that we talked about. This is a bit, bit of a there's a bit of art to this, I guess. Um, so I'm I'm going to try to keep my, I'm going to try to keep this to a minute, I guess, but you can, Facebook has so much data on everybody. Once you start having an audience, they can, they can, it's called lookalike. It's, um, they just know based on certain signals who are other people that look like your current customers and they can target them with ads. Um, then, and, and there's a lot of different ways to do that. So, you can create ads that might appeal to people who look like your current customers, or you can boost your posts that you have that look like your current customers. And then once you've been doing this a little bit, the next level of that is retargeting. So now you want to send ads to people who have already visited your site or already visited your page or are friends of your page, various different ways where you can retarget them, retarget ads to them. Um, that's like, might be called level two, might be called warm traffic. Everybody has different words for this, but this is about kind of getting your Facebook game going. Then there's another set of ads, people that have already bought from you. You want to show them ads again later. And maybe that can be, you know, based on the product they already bought or add on products to it. Or if it's something that gets used up at a certain rate, you might say, you know, three months later, they're going to get similar ads. But it's not just the product. You have to put a little more work into these. The ad has to be, you know, kind of crafted or you do the stories. Um, but the whole, you might get an agency. You might might talk to Facebook. Facebook has reps. So once you start spending money with Facebook, um, take their calls. They send emails. They call you. Um, those, those tips are very helpful. Um, but this is more of a, once you kind of get going, this does take a little bit of time and effort to 
play around in the back end of Facebook to get more and more traffic based on the sales you've already had. Mm-hmm. So, Rich, did I did I cut that off at the appropriate point or no? That any was, more that was great. No, I mean, look, we could we as we said there a few minutes back, actually a couple times in this podcast, we could dive deep on a ton of these things. What this is really about is just kind of going through a checklist for you guys, saying this is the beginning of the year. I wish I would have done some of these things last year, but I didn't need to get moving on some of the things now. You can see how even in the beginning levels, things need to be repeated and improved, like pictures. As you start to create content, you're going to start to get better and better at creating content. So that'll get easier, but you never stop. Um, If you kind of go back on the podcast too, you'll see there's usually one main channel that people are getting traffic from. So um, I'm blanking on the name of the barbecue one, but like we have YouTube for the chuck wagon. Um, We have Instagram for flowers and kiss by a bee. And I mean, we have so many customers that don't all use the same platform of social and we've talked mostly here about Facebook and Instagram, but once you've done a lot of the basics and your features, it's worth at least trying other channels now and going over into other social channels because, you know, I, I laugh even when they talk about Twitters and I, and I think to myself, I think I've even mentioned this on the podcast before. Like, how could you give a company such a hard time that has like 250 million monthly active users? Like, okay, maybe compared to this other one, but I don't know if you're listening to this podcast right now, would you like 250 million people to check out your store? Of course. So um, I think the advanced would be how do you check out some of these other platforms but without trying to waste too much time there. And I know that's that's going to be the hardest part is how do you spend enough time there that you're getting real insights and when you maybe shouldn't be yeah. on there. Yeah, let me kind of – I'll say what you said in a different way. M- master one platform, right? Like First. Fa- yes. So everything we mentioned here was is probably mastering – either the Google side or the Facebook, Instagram side. And it, with ch- whichever of those you hadn't done yet, do the other one. So those are the always going to be the big two, big three, if you want to you know, think Facebook and Instagram are different. But master those, and then, at, you know, this is a good one for this year. Figure out some time where you're going to put a month or two towards one of the other big platforms. So one of the other ones, yeah, it's, it's YouTube or Pinterest or Snapchat or TikTok. TikTok is really, you know, hey, you better be appealing to uh, younger people here. Like, but that's kind of the up, that's the rising one. So um, anyway, we won't go into each of those platforms because, and we have uh, podcasts about most of those. Um, but the, the idea is take what you've learned on another platform and see if you can apply it in the new one, but it's going to be different. So it's going to be the same, but a little bit different. Like YouTube, okay, well, you're making videos. You need to catch people in the first couple seconds. Um, I said I wouldn't go into them, but like, yeah. So you want to, <laughs> you want to, you know, you want to make more of a five minute content um, in the Pinterest world. Okay. Well now you're probably going to be using um, some photo editing to make a long, longer, a taller image. Um, you know, Snapchat's kind of its own beast and uh, TikTok. Like, I mean, you better have your, your meme and your lip syncing game on. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I have it for, for TikTok, but you know, e- I'm just saying each has their own nuances um, that you need to bring to that platform. But you're going to have to, uh, yeah, like you said, you don't want to waste too much time there. But well, you, you know, you got to find the right balance there. Yeah. And I think a lot of that comes down to what we talked about earlier in the podcast is just really getting to know your customer. If you're on the phone or you're doing email and you're asking people, or if you say use this certain hashtag, anyone who uses this hashtag you'll, will direct message you with this coupon or something, you know, what I'm making something up now, but you get it. Eventually, you might find out that um, 
you might not be the age of the people on TikTok, but your product might be perfect for the people. So you might just have your daughter do it or your son do it or no one does any lip syncing and you're a, a toy that tries to lip sync it. You know what I mean? It's just, it really is, where is your audience? Because that's what we're really talking about. Where is your audience? And then what is the type of things that they want to see? What are they spending time? And good thing, sad thing, whatever, a lot of people are spending time on these platforms. So you can fight it or you can embrace it. And we're just saying you should probably embrace it. But start with one thing, work until it's working good, get to know your customers, get better at your pictures, get better at your descriptions, get better at ads, get better at knowing people are constantly being interrupted and distracted. They're turning off their computers at work. That might have been why the sale didn't go through. The boss was just walking through. Like there's so many ways. So for you to be able to remarket them or repurpose things you've shot somewhere and use them somewhere else. Like just keep diving in, keep diving in and focus on that brand and that connection with your customers. And I think that that at the end of of um, twenty twenty, I think you'll definitely see your business head move forward. For sure. Uh, So, Rich, that was a good recap of a lot of the things we talked about. So if you're listening, you know, our goal here is we want to help you with this. So we've given you a bunch of tips that you can apply, but we can't sit next to you. We can't make you do it. We can't make you log into these sites. You have to make that decision to go do it. So we we, we had our resolution here. We're going to put this on a checklist. So go to equid.com forward slash podcast. You're going to find our 2020 show uh, and there's going to be a checklist there so you can pick out whatever of these you think you can do if you want to do them all extra credit um, you know take a picture of it send it back to us on social and maybe we will take our own advice and tell people on social hey look at uh, you know whoever whoever did this so um, yeah it's a new year you know let's, let's get after it rich what do you think here any other any other last thoughts no, yeah, I would say probably overall, one of the comments you just made there, we, we wish we could help you all. And that is true. We do. But there is one way that we can help a lot of you. And that's actually if you go to equid.com forward slash podcast and then pick any podcast and drill down to that particular podcast of that day. So you could be listening. It could be at the bottom of this one right now. If you're on that page, granted, you're going to have to go to again, equid.com forward slash podcast. You're not going to find this in your podcast player, but if you do that and scroll down to the very bottom, you're going to see a button called tell us why. And that's one way that we actually can help you as a merchant. We can sit with you and help you specifically. We can't do it with all of you, but the people who are willing to take those few steps to fill out that form, don't worry. It's not like this IQ test quiz thing or anything. It's super simple. And that's how we get our our Equid customers on the show. And we love it. And it's probably more fun than any of the podcasts we do because we love hearing the feedback from them and how much it's helped their business. So I would say that would be it. Take advantage of that. It's a bit of a challenge. I like it. All right. It is 2020. New year, new you, new business. Get after the checklist. Make it happen. Hey, this is Jesse and Rich. We want to let you know we really appreciate you listening. We hope you find the tips we give you helpful for growing your business. You can find all of our past episodes and a lot more useful stuff at equid.com forward slash podcast. And also check us out on your favorite podcasting platform like Apple Podcast or Stitcher and make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing. Be sure to let us know what you think by rating and reviewing so we can serve you better. So subscribe on your favorite platform. And come join our community, check out the transcripts, 
or tell us why you would be a great guest at equid.com forward slash podcast.